guys, welcome back. So, we're still in Matthew, and we're still going to be in Matthew through the end of this week, I think. I will be in Matthew one more day. So today we're in Matthew 16, and we're looking at 21 through 28. And I might go a little further, but we'll see. Um, so, in this section, Jesus is talking about his own death. So he's like prophesying his own death. Or predicting. So let's jump in. So Matthew 16, 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of the Lord, but merely, man, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. And what good will it be for someone to gain the world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I know there's a lot in there. So the part that I really want to focus on is 24 through 25 where it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And then it also goes on in verse 26 to say, What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeits a, forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? So basically, God is saying, well, Jesus is saying, you want to follow me? Okay, pick up your cross and let's go. Now, our cross isn't a physical cross. It's more like all of our sins and all the things of this world. Take that up and then bury it with him. Leave it with him. Because when Jesus died, he took all of that from us. Or for us, I should say. You didn't take it from us because we still experience this stuff. Um, because we are human. But all of our sin weighed on him. And in the Bible it says that God actually turned away. Because Jesus took on our sin. But then three days later he rose. So, we serve a living God. He is not dead. And he is good and loving and kind. And it, what it's talking about when it says, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? You forfeit your soul if you follow Satan. If you don't follow Christ, you forfeit your soul. And what they're saying is, so you have all this stuff of the world, it's here today and gone tomorrow, yet you gave your soul for it. Whereas if you believe in the Lord and you've accepted his gift, 
your soul is saved and you will have rewards that last forever in heaven and I know that seems a little scary and a little harsh but sometimes people just need to hear that there's only two ways there's no middle way there is choosing Satan and there's choosing Christ and if you don't make a choice that's choosing Satan because there's only two you either choose the flesh or you choose to reject the flesh you choose to reject the world but also you he's not saying don't be part of the world he's saying be part of the world but set apart from the world because I need you to be my light don't give in to things that people around you who don't believe in me give in to. But you still need to be down there and be kind and gentle and merciful and give grace because I do all those things for you and I need you to be my light down there. I need you to show my love to them. And if we, it's, the reason why it says whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it, is because you want to save your life because you're afraid of death, because you don't believe in Christ, and you don't know where you're going. But if you lose your life for the Lord, you know exactly where you're going, and you will find your life. This, this life here on earth is that much time, whereas the rest of our life with the Lord is infinite. We're just a little blip on the timeline when we're here. But we have so much to do while we're here in order to prepare us for our eternal life, to prepare us for our roles in heaven. But also, he wants to spread his word and his light, and he wants us to tell others what they're missing, what they need. Because only God can fill that hole in your heart. Only God can do that. But a lot of people don't know that. And so he's saying, go be my light. Go show others that I'm the only one that can fill this spot with my love and my kindness and my forgiveness and my saving. He saved us. He didn't have to, but he did. And right now he's telling his disciples, hey, I'm going to die, but I will raise again in three days. And I'm going to send someone, which was the Holy Spirit, to be with you. Those disciples didn't understand that at this point. They were confused because they were stuck up in, stuck up on, or stuck on, what they thought the Messiah was going to be. And so, they didn't understand that, yes, Jesus is the Messiah. But he's not the Messiah that you think, because he's not human. He will come back to life. He said so. So right now they're struggling with that. And I know there's a lot of us that are struggling with that as well. Um, believing that he came back to life and believing that he is our Savior and that he sent the Holy Spirit here for us. Believing in his love. But it's real. That's all I can say is it's real. I don't know how to describe it. Besides that when you experience it, you know it's from the Lord. You know it's not like anything you'd ever experienced before. So continue being the light out there. Continue showing people His love. And continue learning about His love. You will never stop learning. I love you guys. See you tomorrow.